everyone, I'm Cody B, and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a free-to-play semi-hardcore tactical shooter by the name of World War III. I discovered World War III some time back before it went free-to-play, and I've always thought it was a decently fun shooter, but now with it being in its full release, it's definitely a good time to get into it. This is the second video I'm making in a sort of loose trio of videos detailing some free-to-play shooters that I find fun. The first one was on a game called Enlisted, so be sure to check that video out as well. Anyway though, in World War III, it takes place in a sort of alternate modern day where, surprise, World War III has broken out. Fighting takes place in many real-world locations such as Berlin and the Korean DMZ, just to name two. Care was taken to make sure these locations are as true to life as possible. This is cool as it makes everything feel a little bit more realistic, which is something that World War III does strive to do in a few ways. Beyond the maps being based on real-world locations and landmarks, the guns are also modeled very well and accurately, giving you a wide range of weapons to use from all over the world. One thing that World War III does that I really enjoy is that there isn't any factions in the game. Like, you're not the American team fighting the Chinese team, it's pretty much just your team versus their team. This allows you to use weapons from any country no matter what team you're on. This is good as the weapons in this game have a ton of depth to them in the form of attachments, all of which are unlocked by using the gun of course. Things like changing barrel length which will affect the effective range of the gun or having canted sights on your rifle so you can use a higher magnification sight for your main one and then a more short range sight for your closer engagements are just two examples of things that you can do. The various different foregrips and muzzle attachments will affect how your recoil performs, and not to mention the various cosmetic attachments you can add to truly make the guns your own. Now I will admit that you'll most likely end up putting more or less the same attachments on each gun that you use. It definitely doesn't have the depth of the gunsmith in Call of Duty, but it's not really that big of an issue as the system manages to be simple but still give you a good amount of freedom in your weapon builds. Furthermore, each gun does feel distinct with different recoil patterns, so you may put a foregrip on every one of your guns, but the bonus that foregrip gives will change depending on what you want the gun to do. Overall, it's a really fun system that makes me want to use and make a build for each gun in the game, which more are being added now that the game is in its full release. These guns are being added through the battle pass system that we will touch more on later. This desire to use all the guns is mainly propped up by the gameplay. The guns in this game have a very noticeable weight to them, the recoil is heavy, and the guns have a satisfying punch to them. This is also helped with the fact that the time of the kill is so fast in this game. Even if you're using the max amount of armor that you can from your custom class, it still only takes a few shots to kill. This combined with the decently sized maps creates a lot of opportunities for tactical gameplay and teamwork. It's incredibly unlikely that you'll be able to clear a point off by yourself, so you have to work with teammates moving intelligently and shooting for each other. And I gotta say, when everything lines up and everyone does what they're supposed to do and you clear the point off and start to capture it for yourself, it feels great. I suppose I should spend a bit of time discussing the main game mode in World War III. There are two of them, there's a basic teed and deathmatch game mode, which is fine, but the big one is Tactical Ops. This is domination on steroids. Each point A, B, and C are split into two areas, and the team must control both areas to gain points, the first to 5,000 wins. It's an extremely simple concept for the game that still allows a lot of strategy to take it on. Oftentimes you'll spend most of the match going back and forth between let's say A1 and A2 as they constantly change hands or are contested. And let's say that you're constantly losing an area, so instead you break off into another area that the enemy may be neglecting as they send resources to others. Overall, Tactical Ops is a very easy mode to dive into, and once you learn the maps, it becomes extremely fun. Another side note for something that this game does that I really enjoy is that you are given tools to fight against vehicles very quickly. An anti-tank class that has access to an RPG is the first thing that you unlock after your starter class. That's a good thing as there is a lot of vehicles between the different ones that will spawn in the beginning of the game and people's score streaks. Overall, vehicles aren't that bad. Some I do find a bit annoying to go up against, but like I said, having an RPG to help deal with them is very nice, and getting that killing blow on a tank or a helicopter is extremely satisfying. Although to me it does feel like a bit of a requirement to use a class that does have an RPG on most maps as a majority of the areas you'll be fighting over have vehicle access and that can limit your class a little bit. But at the end of the day, if you don't have an RPG, someone else around you probably will so it's not that big of a deal. Up next we'll spend a bit of time talking about your score and streaks. Almost every action you perform will give you points towards your streaks, whether that's capturing and defending an area, killing enemies, your teammates using your equipment like health packs and ammo refills, and if you happen to be the squad leader, you'll get a lot of points for your squad mates following your orders to attack areas and get kills on the ordered areas. The streaks themselves are very good as well. You get UAVs, counter UAVs, artillery strikes, and a multitude of vehicles that include tanks, helicopters, various anti-infantry drones, and much more. As far as I'm aware as well, just like the guns, the vehicles are fairly accurate representations of the real-life counterparts, so if you're someone who loves military vehicles, this is a pretty good selling point for you. 
Gameplay inside of vehicles is also very good. I'll be honest, vehicle combat is not really my thing. I rarely like using vehicles, but this game is a bit of an exception, as controls are very tight and simple. And even though I do find it extremely cheap and it requires no skill, driving into a point and killing all of the infantry is quite a bit of fun. To wrap this part of the video up, before I get into the battle pass and monetization, the gameplay is World War III's biggest selling point. It's very similar to Battlefield, but for free. And with the long back and forth intense matches, it makes for a very good time. And the best part is that it's very casual. You're not like fighting for ranks, and as far as I know, there isn't any skill-based matchmaking, so there's a variety of skill levels in the game, and for me, at least, that's perfect. But now let's take a bit to talk about the store and battle pass. With this being a free-to-play game, this sort of stuff is to be expected. Overall, I don't hate the system. The pass is available for a very long time, and the base versions of all the new guns are available for free, but they're pretty deep in the pass. At least the QBZ-95 is being unlocked at level 28. For me, this is just a bit far in the battle pass, and it really incentivizes you to pay for it, because as of now, this is the only way to get these new guns, and it is possible that once the season for this battle pass is over, these guns will become unobtainable. To be clear, as far as I know, the guns being unobtainable after the season ends hasn't been explicitly stated by the developers, at least I couldn't find any statements when I looked it up, but it wouldn't really surprise me either way if it did become unobtainable, as obviously they want people to buy the battle pass. But in its defense, you do level up fairly quickly in the battle pass even if you don't buy it so if you're playing consistently you will likely get most if not all of the free stuff that you want but it will require an investment of time as far as the rest of the store goes you have access to several different weapon blueprints skins and other cosmetics if i'm completely honest not much of this stuff really captures too much of my attention as for the blueprints this is just weapon loadouts with attachments and stuff which is something that i prefer to do on my own but if you don't have that particular weapon leveled up very high a blueprint might let you use a better version of that gun and until you can build your own. In the end, I find the monetization of World War 3 to be very inoffensive. It's a free game that has to make money somehow, and these paid things are cosmetic. Even the blueprints aren't broken, as they're literally just attachments that are on the gun. They have the same stats that the base gun would have with the same attachments, so I see no issue. And I don't even feel bad about buying the battle pass, as this is a game that I am enjoying. I really hope to see this game grow and stick around for a long time, so if you're still watching the video, I highly recommend that you download the game and give it a shot. But that's going to be it for me. I'd like to thank you for watching. Hope you have a blessed day, and peace out.